Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. I am so excited to share with you my journey of Tess crocheting the Soundwave Shawl by Stephanie Aaron. This is a beautiful fingering weight and mohair shawl that is such a joy to crochet. It was so much fun to share this adventure with my friend Kate, who is one of a Kate. She also filmed her process of test crocheting the Soundwave shawl. And like the professional tester that she is, she created a gorgeous version of Soundwave. Make sure to check out her channel, One of a Kate, to see her video. I'll have it linked down below. And if you're watching during the premiere, make sure to head to Kate's channel right after this at 10.30 a.m. to watch her premiere. I'll be there too, chatting and knitting. This gorgeous pattern releases today. You can find the link down below. Now without further ado, let's start crocheting. Okay, I'm here in my bedroom because the lighting tends to be so nice naturally in here and I don't have to get my lights and stuff. Plus my tripod was already up here and it's just like a nice neutral room. And look, I have my buddy here with me, but let me adjust here just a little bit. So I have all of my supplies right here behind me to wind up the yarn. I'm really excited. Um, the second that I saw Stephanie's Soundwave shawl on Instagram, I knew that I wanted to make it. I've been wanting to crochet with mohair for a long time. And Stephanie has beautiful, beautiful crocheted garment designs. And when she came out with the shawl, I was like, that is speaking to me. It's fingering weight, it is mohair, and it's a shawl, like I'm 100% in. So I was just really pleased that she was she picked me to test, I'm super grateful, and I'm excited to show you guys this journey. So let me show you my yarn real quick, and then, and then we will get to winding. So I picked out this yarn last year in 2019 at the Knitting in the Hills retreat. So I picked this yarn out originally for the birds of a feather shawl. I didn't know if I was going to make it, but I knew I could make at least that, if not something else with it. So I've got two skeins from Suburban Stitcher. This is Peach Tea in her single sock base, which is 400 yards of 100% superwash merino. I love single ply and I'm really excited to work with that. And then I decided to go with a different yarn. Um, she did have this same color on the mohair base, but it was very, very pale and I wanted something a little bit brighter. So we'll have to see as those work together because these are this is a lot pinker than this, it's more peach. So we'll have to see if I made the right decision here. But this is Chasing Rabbits Gossamer Lace and it's 70% ultra fine kid mohair and 30% silk. So I'm really excited. You need 800 yards of the fingering weight, so that's why I've got my two skeins, and only like 300 yards, I think, of the um, mohair, and so I should be good with these three skeins. I haven't done my gauge swatch yet, but I am gonna try a four millimeter hook. That's what she has recommended so far. That's upside down. There you go. These are my favorite Clover Amores. Love Clover Amour. And casting on this new project, winding up these fresh skeins of yarn, gives me a really good chance to try out um, a pattern that I'm designing right now. I don't have a name for this yet. It might even be out by the time I'm done testing. We'll have to see. Um, but these are just cute little yarn cozies that I'm designing. This one has some fun faux cables on it. So this will give me not only a good chance to test these, of course I haven't woven in the ends, make sure they work, but I'll also be alternating between these two since they're hand dyed and having them in two different cozies will help me remember better which one I just used previously because I'm gonna be changing them after mohair rounds or rows so I might not remember which one I had just used. So having two different color cozies is gonna help me not just to manage the yarn but to tell which one is which. So I'm about to wind these up into cakes but this I have learned, mohair makes a beautiful cake, but it does not stay in a cake very well. So I'm actually gonna be hand winding this from the beginning into a ball, and it'll just be a lot easier for yarn management. This type of swift that I use is called an Amish swift. 
I love this type of Swift because it works for almost any skein with its adjustable dowels. Mine is made from a small company called Fiber Artist Supply Co. They are awesome and I will have them linked down below. Here's a quick winding tip. Try to cut all of the ties that don't include two ends first. You'll know which ones include ends because it will have more strings leading to the skein. Adjust the skein so that it isn't twisted and then finally snip the final tie. I like to keep one end out of the way by wrapping it around the dowel and clamping it with a chip clip. Otherwise, you're in danger of getting the strand caught on the base of the Swift. Just ask me how I know. This ball winder includes a clamp for tables, but I tend to wind on my bed or the floor the most. I honestly don't know if there are many things as satisfying as a freshly wound yarn cake. Do you have any tips for handling mohair yarn? Let me know below. Sometimes it can be a tricky beast, but it is worth the result. Don't be upset with the messenger, but swatching is so important. Swatching doesn't just tell you about gauge. It also allows you to test the fabric of your piece practice any stitches, see if you want to carry yarns or cut them. It also answers questions like, how do these colors look together? What happens when I wash this? I think I've heard swatching referred to as a first date with your crochet. So let's flirt a little with the yarn and see if we want to commit to a project, okay? I decided to work my swatch with both the mohair and fingering weight, only later realizing that the gauge was given for just the fingering weight yarn. It's important to check for details like that when you are swatching for gauge. Luckily, since this is a shawl, it was okay not to be exactly spot on. Okay, I came outside for just a minute to chat. <clears throat> and as soon as I came out, an airplane or something started going over. It's so cloudy, so the light is just perfect right now but here's my little swatch it is just so delicate i'm pretty sure i have gauge because i measured last night but i'm going to double check here in just a second but i did swatch with both the fingering and the mohair um mostly because i wanted to practice like if i was carrying the yarn or what i was going to do so i am not going to be carrying my yarn i did carry it on the mohair let me see if i can show you guys you can see right there i was carrying it but i think i'm going to cut it and um, crochet over it for the mohair and not for the fingering um, so we'll see how that works um, but it is perfect because with the fingering weight because I got to alternate my two skeins because you have to cut it anyway so might as well alternate if I have to cut my yarn anyway um, so that is working out so great also crocheting with the mohair is not hard like I thought it was going to be basically the mohair you just have to kind of hold it very delicately because it is so delicate and don't make things tight just crochet nice and loose like your normal gauge and hold it like yeah like delicately and it's a little bit harder to go into it after with the fingering weight yarn it's not hard it's just you have to really pay attention it's very like skeletal you can really see all the parts of the stitch so 
I wanted to get some good practice in with my swatch crocheting with the mohair and I think I'm good and ready to get it cast on. So I'm gonna go back up right now. I've been in my bed just crocheting and I'm gonna go back up there and get this thing started. Before I begin with a design or a test, I will weigh my skeins. This helps me calculate the yardage I use once the project is over. I know that my cozy weight is 12 grams, so I'll make sure to subtract that from the weight of the skein. I love waking up early on weekend mornings to sit in bed, drink coffee, and crochet. Do you ever get up early or stay up late just so you can have some alone time with your yarn? Baby shawls are seriously the cutest. I love how quickly shawls grow at the beginning stages when the rows are the shortest. It makes them feel so quick. This shawl really started to move over the next few days. It took me a total of 12 days to finish the shawl, which I feel like is super fast. Compared to knitting a shawl, this is definitely quick. Kate, on the other hand, finished her shawl in less than 48 hours. I cannot wait to go watch her journey after this. I feel like she must not have slept or ate. Most of the time that I'm sitting here in this computer chair, I'm either starting off my day with YouTube and crochet or in a Zoom meeting. Anyone else been able to crochet a lot more at work lately? I can't say that I'm mad about it. So it has been almost a week since I started my shawl and I thought I would show you guys the progress that I made plus some tips I have for this mohair. So, I am on row like 35 out of 45, so I am getting close to the last row here, 10-ish rows away, but the thing is that every row gets longer and longer and longer, so it is going to take me, it takes me a while to get across a row for sure. Um, so I have been cutting my yarn every single time that I go to a new section like not every row but just every time I change yarns and I've been alternating between the two fingering weight um, skeins because they're a little bit different and that has worked out really really well I haven't woven in a single end yet so I think I need to spend some time today weaving these ends in um, at first I was crocheting over the mohair let me see if I can find a spot where I've done that right here I don't know if you can see maybe you can see it right there so since it's visible i decided to stop doing that and i'm going to see if i can do a better job like weaving it in in its own row to see if that will be any better um so i do have a lot of ends to weave in but it's going to be totally worth it i am worried because i think i'm gonna i might run out of yarn so i'm gonna have plenty of mohair no problem at all but my two skeins of fingering weight are starting to get smaller and smaller. Um, I am 
right before I started this last row, I weighed this scheme that I'm using on my kitchen scale. And then I'm gonna weigh it after and that will tell me how many grams that I used. And then with that knowledge, I'm gonna calculate how many I have left versus how many rows of this fingering weight I have left to do. So I will know soon if I'm gonna run out of yarn or not. So then at least I can plan for it. Um, but my gauge, my row gauge was off. It was definitely too long, but because my stitch gauge was small, I thought it would kind of balance out. Like when the stitches stretched, then the rows would get shorter and I thought it would be fine but it turns out I probably should have used a smaller size hook. So gauge is important even on shawls. Let that be a lesson. It's about to be a lesson for me, but either way, I'm going to make it work and talk with Stephanie to make sure that I'm still giving her useful information like from testing this. So I'm excited. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be a good size, like no matter what. So I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. I would love to finish this um, by next week. And I think I have 12 more days to finish it. No, maybe. I can't remember, but I'm hoping to finish it early so that I will not be right up to the deadline because sometimes I'll finish something and it takes me a long time to get pictures. So I'm very, very happy with it. Well, guess who ended up getting pictures right on deadline day? I guess some old habits just die hard. I still made it though, and I have a beautiful shawl to show for it. I finally took a moment to weave in some ends. I love these Susan Bates finishing needles for times when I have to weave in a lot of ends at once. They come in a pack of five, and for fingering weight, I use the smallest yellow one. It feels so good to have most of the ends woven in before the project is finally finished. I set my timer for 30 minutes to challenge myself to get as many ends done as I could. I thought I would show you how I've been storing my project. I'm using the shell of my two skein float tote plus two yarn cozy lights to hold the yarn. I was amazed that these little yarn cozies held onto the fingering weight throughout the whole project, even when the yarn was almost gone. I'm on my final row here and it looks like I'm going to make it without running out of yarn. How much do you love a pattern that uses up all of your yarn to the very end? When I'm finished with a project, I like to go ahead and wind up the remainder of the yarn into a ball. This way, it's ready to be used for scrappy projects or design swatches later on. Oh. Oh. Come on. It's falling off of you. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> so it's been a few days since I actually finished the shawl. Actually, I don't know how many days it's been, but I've yet to block it. So I thought I would show you one last glimpse before I block it because I do believe it being um, single ply and double crochet and mohair, I feel like it's going to stretch a lot and I'm really excited about that. So I can try it on unblocked to kind of show the difference. Should have made that lower. <laughs> Don't stand on the bed at home. Um, but anyway, so this is it now. You can already wrap it around, which is great. I know that it's already like the perfect shawl for me because I can wrap it up like this. This is how I wear all of my shawls and scarves. So 
it's perfect it's kind of nice actually because instead of a triangle where it just like comes to the front and doesn't actually like keep you warm here <laughs> this kind of comes out like that so I do I really like that so I can't wait to see what it does when I block it I think I might have a measuring tape over there I might actually measure just out of curiosity to see um, the differences so yeah let's do that Okay, so right now it's measuring 60 inches across from tip to tip. And it's measuring 24 inches deep if I measure one of the points to the curve at the top. So 60 and 24. So let's see what happens after it's blocked and dried. One of my favorite soaps to use is Soak because you don't have to rinse it out. This pineapple one smells amazing. I like to soak my makes for about 20 minutes in cool soapy water before pulling them out. all soapy. What do you do now? You just let it soak for three to six months. <laughs> now what? You dry your hands off. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay, maybe we should leave this blocking thing to the professionals. Even though this is a non-rinse formula, I still rinse my shawls carefully. I want to wash away all the dirt particles and food crumbs that inevitably get into my items. Then I'll squeeze out all of the water that I can before rolling the piece in a towel. The towel makes a huge difference. As long as I block the item in a single layer, I'm able to get it dried overnight. I feel like I'm a bread maker here just kneading my dough or maybe pizza dough ready to toss into the air. This shawl doesn't need much, just a large place to lay out flat to dry. Like with most shawls, I usually need my blocking board and a few blocking squares to get the job done. So I usually have no issues tugging on my shawls. Usually one side is a little tighter than the other from either increasing or decreasing but I didn't realize how delicate the mohair and single ply would be and I broke the yarn. Not to worry though, these things can be repaired. I left it to dry overnight. I could not wait to see how it would measure after blocking in the AM. So 
after blocking, this grew about three inches in length and like 13, or I'm sorry, three inches in depth and like 13 inches in length. So it definitely blocked out bigger. So I'm measuring like 27 inches by 73, I think right now. And it is looking beautiful. So now it's gonna be even better to wear as a big old shawl just like that and it's got even more drape. I cannot wait to go get pictures. We might be able to go get them tomorrow. We'll have to see, but I'm definitely gonna put on a better outfit, at least one that matches a little bit. All right, guys, I am sitting here already mic'd up, ready with my lights for my podcast. And so I thought it would be a great time to add my final thoughts in about the Soundwave shawl. This thing is, it was so much fun to make. It was quick. Let me see how long it actually took me because I feel like that's important. For knitters, knitting a shawl, it is not unusual for a shawl to take one to two months. We have no qualms about that because knitting a shawl, especially one this big, in three skeins of yarn is a lot, a lot of knitting. But crochet makes it so fast. So if you are a knitter, that also crochets and you wanna blow through some stash, crocheting a shawl is a great way to go. And this one is a wonderful pattern. So let's see, I started on April 4th and completed it on April 14th, but I only really just got to the blocking and the taking pictures and everything. It just turned out so beautifully. It drapes so nicely. The colors are really, even in person, a little hard to distinguish from each other. Um, which is great because I was worried that the mohair was going to be too pink for the peachy color. Um, I loved making this. I would totally make another one if I did. I think I would use um, not, a, not a single ply because I want to see how that would be different and I want to do something super contrasting. So I would totally make another one. I love how it wears. I'll put in some video here of me kind of just, you know, trying it on so you can see what it looks like. And I've also got some beautiful pictures that I'm going to put at the end. So I don't know. I think I love it. I love the Soundwave shawl. Definitely highly recommend. Um, so I will um, put my project links down below and also that should be able to take you through to Ravelry um, to grab the pattern if you so desire. So <sighs> wrapping up my thoughts, love the Soundwave shawl. Thank you guys so much for watching this journey. I've got a couple funny clips that I saved for the end, so make sure to stick around and watch those. We're heading over to Kate's channel right now to watch her premiere at 10.30 a.m. on May 1st. If you're watching this later on, you will find Kate's video linked down below. Make sure to go check out her Soundwave shawl. It is seriously gorgeous. All right, I'll see you guys on Tuesday for a fun new video. Bye. <gasps> Sit. I like your shawl, buddy. Oh, I thought you were going to and this has been brought to you by Soap. Soak your stuff. <laughs>